Hi, I'm Lone Zebedee, uh, one of four of the New Old Heads podcast, and uh, we are backstage with Free the Robots, and we're going to talk about some stuff. Um, <laughs> first off, I appreciate you sitting down with us, Thanks especially after I, I, I expect a very long travel. Yeah, yeah, it was a solid full day coming from Mexico, but we're here, we got here, from the heat to the freezing cold. Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> yeah, it's cold. Um. All right, so I have a few questions here that I'm going to read that some of the podcast guys put together, and okay. then uh, then we'll just kind of go into some other stuff. Uh, right. The fir- first question here is, your styles combine hip-hop, jazz, psychedelic music, and electronic music. With that said, who are some of your biggest influences? Um, I mean... And why? I would say, like, you know, I kind of started... Um, the idea of making music when uh, I heard DJ Crush and DJ Shadow okay. and um, Portishead and that, that whole era of like, you know, just that, just that era, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, don't get, I, I don't have no word to explain it, but um, yeah, that was the first inspiration. And then um, aside from that and hip hop and, and, and uh, starting to collect records um, that hip hop sampled and, and all those types of music sampled. And uh, it kind of expanded my library of music into psychedelic and jazz and funk and soul, and mm-hmm. just kept on going. So when did you jump into it? When when did you when did you say you really said, "All right, I'm like doing this. I'm gonna I'm a producer. I'm gonna do these things." I mean, it's probably a gradual process, I would assume. But when yeah, when yeah. did it kind of like click for you? Like, um, well, I you know, or what um, happened? I guess. I first started as a DJ, just mm-hmm. like playing house parties and okay. you know collecting records and. But really, um, I think it was about 2003 or, yeah, 2002 is when I started really. Um, technology became available a yeah. lot more yeah. for. Um, yeah, this Nat <laughs> this follows Nat us around here. every time we do All right. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, he likes to be on camera. <laughs> uh, yeah, just, uh, just around the early 2000s is, is um, when things like acid music software and yep. free loops and uh, I had reason. I started with acid three yep and <laughs> yeah, loops too. With, yep. So, yeah, yeah we all you know we all kind of I think a lot of people have the same story there so what do you use now then I still use reason man I've used reason since reason one and okay. I'm at like reason 10 now okay. so I can dig <laughs> I, I know I know producers that s- yeah. stuck with reason they love it so yeah I mean there's no I'm sure like tons of there's so much better ways to make music but when you you know it's not broke <laughs> so when Still you play live, do you do is it do you use Reason as well or no? I use Ableton Live. Okay, yeah, that seems to be the yeah, go-to that is. these days. All right, cool. Uh, so you, you've got a lot of music out. Do you have a favorite? Do I have a favorite? Um, uh, right now, I guess the most recent one is like the Caravan Project with mm-hmm. my homie Lefto um, out of Belgium. Oh, okay. Um, but other than that, I don't know. I mean, I guess like they're only my favorites at the time. But mm-hmm. yeah, right now, just Caravan. I was, gotcha. I enjoyed, I really, thoroughly enjoyed making that record. When did that come out? Man, that came out this year. I don't exactly remember. Um, maybe March. Okay. Yeah, something like that. That's what's up. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember, I remember a few years ago. Um, I think it was my f- introduction to you. Actually, you you did a project with Opio, right? Yeah, that's correct. And I remember when that came out. How how was it like working with with him, and how did that come about? It was really cool, man. I mean, I've listened to Opio and Souls of Mischief and Hieroglyphics for you know since I think that was the very first CD that I ever purchased wow. yeah. back in the day. Um, but Opio is an amazing dude, and and it was the the whole process was really dope because we just went into the forest basically okay. in the Pacific Northwest. Um, this place. Casadero or something like that north of Oakland and we just spent a week um, pretty much recording the the whole record and knocked it out and just did it like just super independent style like we kind of just made our own label for it and it was just a very it was just a moment that was just very special yeah so you made a made a record in the forest (laughs) yeah yeah we we had a little (laughs) cabin like he had a homie had a cabin over there and it was like this tiny little box and I came with beats and he came with the rhymes. Right, that's <laughs> pretty <laughs> simple. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, so where where are you from? Are you from the Bay Area or are you? Or where'd you um, I'm originally from a place called Santa Ana, um, Santa south Ana. of Los Angeles. Okay. Um, it's my hometown, man. All right. Yeah. 
do you kind of do you try to attack every project differently um or how, how I, how's that kind of work for you there's really uh there's no plan for attack you just kind of just kind of and if whether it's the same or different it's just whatever mm -hmm. i'm feeling you know i mean yeah. once again it's like between observing different energies here and there like with touring um i started to extend tours and end up living in places oh, okay for a while just because uh you know and it, it messes with my my thought process as well for creating and yeah they really there is no direction at all all right i just improvise really. where did you do that at where did you extend a tour and stay um i stayed in barcelona for a mm -hmm. few months uh so it wasn't like montana or no, 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 no. <laughs> There's just, it just you when when you start touring um, internationally, you kind of realize the bubble we live here in, in the states, <laughs> and 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 you know the cost of living and 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 the cost to, or just ways to live internationally kind of make a lot more sense than you would think because out here we're like, you know, especially in LA, we just think that's. It is a huge bubble and they're like okay this is this is how it is but man i was like paying like pennies in barcelona right. with like living in paradise mm -hmm. and just like being able to just vibe out and i was creating out there too because three months is a long time to be away from the studio yeah that yeah. is but yeah there the philippines um and just being in and out of you know different different cities every couple of weeks Mm -hmm. you know giving it some time how often do you yeah how often do you go on tour a lot i think i've been gone for it's the past six months <laughs> and um granted there's 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 an audience out there and in, in the strangest places you just never mm -hmm. know like who's really listening to your music and it's it's been keeping me on tour i think i've been actively touring since 2009 nice so can't be mad thankful that. <laughs> thankful mm -hmm. that people are still down you yeah know, it's, it's great to vibe with people do everywhere. you um this is one of my favorite questions that when you're on tour two questions actually one being a producer myself i'm always curious do you create a lot while you're on tour do you have is it is it possible for you to create on tour um do you have I, headspace for it <laughs> do you like to enjoy yourself or I'll, can you even enjoy where you're at i've tried um i like to separate um, tour life from creative life. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, tour life is still creative too, because essentially you're just kind of you're just seeing a lot of new stuff, gathering ideas, you're, you're gathering a lot experience. of ideas, and and I don't know how you, somehow you could channel it eventually later. But for me, I, I like to separate the studio from tour life because there's such different headspaces. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just me personally. Right. There's tons of people who can really create on the road, and it's it's really tough for me. I'm just buying records on the road. <laughs> eating and just absorbing energy from people in, in the environments that I'm in. Yeah. What's the, the craziest place you've ever been that the tour has ever taken you? Um, Jerusalem would be one. Okay. Yeah, it's a pretty, it's pretty crazy. Um, surprising, insanely dope music scene out there. And uh, I don't know. I mean, I, like my music can get kind of out there sometimes. Mm hmm and I kind of find myself playing in a lot of uh, anarchist squats and like <laughs> weird depths, like has nothing, like, I don't know, there's there's almost two different personalities in the music. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there's like a very rough edge, like super almost punk rock energy going on with one audience. And then there's like a party audience and kind of gets jumbled in <laughs> and somehow like I can fit in so, some, some way in that. But right. I don't know. I really enjoy um, the really like raw stuff, though. Mm -hmm. Like enjoying a different energy that like we'll be playing in a abandoned water bunker in a <laughs> with bombs going off outside. And I'm like, okay, supplying the soundtrack. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can dig that. Yeah. Talk about beat scenes. Yeah, yeah. You know, like uh, I don't want to say popular. That's not really the word. It's it's growing, I guess. You know, the producer scene, the instrumental. Yeah. You know, it, how how is it? there because i know here in indianapolis um it's only been starting to grow in the last five years probably or so yeah which low in theory has been going on for a lot longer than that yeah so i think like 11 11 years at this point 
um but it's taken many shapes man um with lauren theory they had their thing um that was a whole nother thing and um i think there's so many different younger crews that started coming out and you know barring from the format of making instrumental music and um taking it in way different directions than it originally was and and doing beautiful stuff with it and mm -hmm. creating new cultures that 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 appeal to different audiences and larger audiences mm -hmm. like Lowen's still kind of like our cult little <laughs> Los Angeles thing that just you know made waves but you know there's there's tons of other talents that that I truly respect for you know doing what they do right and um it's it's it just keeps on evolving man <laughs> yeah awesome <clears throat> all right well uh i won't keep you much longer i know you want to eat oh yeah <laughs> and uh look forward to the show tonight and um again appreciate you sitting down with us and taking time i know it was a long flight yeah. and all that stuff yeah, so it's crazy i'm longevity again for the new old heads podcast free the robots thank you